uh, uh, he um, was uh, teaching, or is still teaching, I don't know exactly, in, in the uh, uh, Politecnico for some time, uh, Politecnico di Milano, which is uh, uh, probably the most famous engineering and architecture school in, yeah. in uh, uh, Italy, and, and also beyond Italy, uh, quite quite uh, important uh, place. And he's uh, otherwise also teaching in Bologna, right? Uh, yes. There's, I think, your, your main position. And um, so uh, why I asked him to, to come to us uh, for, for this input is, uh, as you remember, we are talking about different kind of ways how we are now, because we are not kind of setting the foot uh, physically into the city. We are not exploring the city as we, we can. We, we use digital means. Uh, it basically uh, needs other tools, right? And, but on the other hand, there are so many amazing tools out there. Of course, we don't need them only in the, in the time of uh, pandemic. Actually, we, we can use them every day. But I think the, the time at the moment is a particular boosting time that it basically kind of uh, uh, brings many people online and let us re again reflect about their opportunities, right? And uh, so last time, what I remember when we were in Berlin, uh, also with Luisa, uh, um, I think you also made a, a, a very nice input uh, on using uh, online resources to to study cities, right? So yeah. that's why I I thought it it might be uh, great to to invite you again and uh, know each other. But uh, um, and so without further ado, and and sorry for the delay and so on. Uh, I want to give the word to Simone, and I hope it will be interesting for, for our students. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And uh, thank you, Andrew, for inviting me, of course. And thank you also to Manfredo. And uh, well, uh, I think uh, not good afternoon, but good evening for you uh, from Bologna, of course, even if I have San Francisco in the background. So there is something that is not uh, perfectly fitting my my presentation in terms of location but i will try to share my screen because i would like to uh, start uh, i hope that you can see uh, my presentation here yes. uh, i would like to start my presentation exactly uh, talking about what Enric was uh, um, introducing uh, because, uh, um, well, I'm into digital technologies in terms of uh, information management, uh, even at the uh, city scale and, and also at the architectural scale, because uh, uh, I'm working a lot with databases and uh, graphic databases, just like a specific process that is called uh, building information modeling, but it's something that is um, outside of the boundary of my presentation. Uh, today, I hope that you can find and that you can see my presentation. Yeah. I would quickly, um, perfect, I would, I would quickly uh, set some uh, ideas and um, have some uh, key principles that we will find in uh, some free software that I would like to introduce you uh, in order to help you maybe uh, in, the, in, the manage, in the management of the information that you are probably collecting and gathering for your design activities. So uh, I would like to uh, talk about a practical open mapping because uh, I would like to introduce uh, some specific frameworks that are, of course, free of use because we are also interested in this uh, specific uh, um, in this specific aspect, but we uh, also are interested in the feasibility on what we can do with information in uh, uh, placed all over the maps. So first of all, let me talk about the first keyword, the map, because I know that every one of you is probably already acquainted with the idea that we can put information on maps, because of course we are all full of mapping softwares and full of maps, uh, every day we use them. But let me get into this specific uh, um, definition because I would like to uh, talk about mapping just like a symbolic depiction of information. So I think that the idea of map that we have to, uh, to take into account when we are talking about a specific software that can let us put information of geographic uh, representation is about the depiction of relationships. And this is very important because you are dealing with space and you are dealing with the uh, people and maybe you are dealing with the, the relationship that are occurring between 
people and spaces. So if we can map this kind of information on a, a digital framework that is able to uh, relate uh, what can be, uh, what can happen uh, in places to a specific database of information that is visually uh, easy to, to access because we can see a map, of course, uh, it is the key point of this, uh, of, this, uh, of this process that I would like to introduce. So the first keyword is map, and the map is a depiction of relationships. The second key point that I would like to uh, focus on is information, because we already talk a lot about information. We need information. And uh, of course, first of all, you need information in order to develop your own uh, projects, because maybe you have to deal with information. And maybe you can come across a lot of different kinds of information. But my idea of information is the resolution of uncertainty. So if you consider information as something that can solve problems and solve uncertainty, well, you can get the idea that maybe this information can be connected to maps. Uh, and of course, if we are dealing with this kind of approach digitally, if we can deal with the uh, information connected to geography and to geographic information, we can also uh, think about all of this as something that we can use every day because if you think to uh, all your smartphones uh, all your computer or your laptop uh, also the internet is something that is resembling this idea that we can have information connected to specific place they can be a physical place in terms of mapping but they can be also digital place in terms of digital representation of relationships and this is the idea that i was repeating of course, there are many, many, many ways to represent information on maps, and there is a lot of math behind, but don't be scared and don't be worried about this because I don't want to get into math because it will be so boring and I don't want to get into uh, how digital frameworks are able to represent information in terms of digital uh, algorithms and things like that. But of course, there are specific approaches, just like the, the UTM, that is a specific way to represent our Earth in terms of maps, that we can find in uh, everyday technology. Uh, UTM is a specific projection of, the, of, the, of, of our Earth using a specific representation and a, a reference system that is called the WGS84 that we can find in every single uh, software that we can use today because it is the very basis of the, uh, the very foundation of the use in, uh, for example, GPS and satellite information that are, of course, related to wide areas. So if you use Google Maps, uh, if you use uh, Apple Maps, uh, or maybe Bing or Waze, everything is based on this mathematical approach that, uh, you know, it's very complex in terms of uh, uh, math, but it's very easy and uh, useful to use. Why we are starting from this? Because every single element that we can uh, find in order to use uh, maybe online resources, that is the final goal of my presentation, I would like to introduce this element because we will find them in uh, online resources, is something that we can use to connect information in a standardize, standardized way on specific maps that we can find and use online. Please take into account that information is something that is related to the economic process. So if you own information, information you have some economic uh, wealth in some way, because information is the, in some way, is the new way of richness. If you own the information, you are owning something that can be sold, that can be managed, and that can be used for many, many, many ways, many, many, many ways. So uh, the idea to get into this kind of uh, collection of information and place the information into a map is also related to analysis. And this is quite, quite important. This is uh, something that is quite famous because it is uh, the representation of the 
uh, the rise of the pandemic uh, expressed in terms of, uh, uh, of mapping uh, where disease started to spread. So it is something that during the last month was very, very famous and very diffused. It is information. And it is information that is connected to a standardized way to map uh, everything. That, of course, it is uh, WGS84, but anyway, it doesn't matter so much. And information is everywhere, is everywhere. Uh, even if you can see this, for example, this is a text uh, that I made uh, some month ago. You can do this because it is quite funny. Uh, I used the many spare electric wire in order to create a very simple antenna and that you can find in the, in the left picture here. And if you connect this antenna to a laptop, for example, you can decode all the signals that are coming from satellites. And the final result, is this one. So you can see information displayed on maps. And of course, this is weather information. This is a thermal information. You can see a lot of elements that maybe are specifically meant for professionals that are involved in uh, weather forecast. I don't know. But this is information that is connected to a map. And the idea is that it is much uh, easier to understand than a lot of numbers that are telling us how clouds are moving, where uh, it is raining now, and things like that. So if I can see a uh, vis visual representation of information connected to a map is much, much easier to me to understand what is happening than uh, processing numbers, because we have to think that the digital world is mainly made of numbers. Of course, this is quite easy, and uh, but it could be also quite complex to do. There is a third keyword that I would like to introduce. Maybe you already know this, because when things are getting complex, we have to use specific tools. And one of the most known tools that you can use in the digital coordination and management of information is the GIS, the Geographic Information System. Uh, this is a very basic definition of this because uh, you can see that uh, a GIS is something that is collecting information, layering this kind of information, uh, uh, creating relationships. So uh, basically, uh, GIS is a software. I think that you already know this kind of approach because it is a software that is uh, gathering information and display information, maybe in terms of two-dimensional maps, uh, in which you can perform some analysis in which you can perform some evaluation, not only in terms of distances and measurements of wide areas, but also in terms of uh, um, definition of uh, the widespread of some uh, specific event, or maybe in the definition of the amount of uh, people that are maybe gathering in a specific place or something like that. A GIS is a very complex framework, that of course can be free or commercial. I think that the commercial software is um, in some way um, a little bit more advanced than the, the open source one, but you can find also open source GIS that can manage and analyze, because the key concept is that it can be analyzed, a lot of information with a lot of relationships connected. Why I'm talking about this? Because we are interested in this web GIS that are specific softwares that you can find online. And I think that you uh, already know this kind of, uh, of framework because, for example, Google Earth is one of the most uh, well-known web GIS that you can find online. Why we are interested in this? Because if you are collecting information and if you are placing information into a map, you have probably to deal with the idea of what you need from that kind of information. And if you need a lot of analysis, a lot of uh, um, elements that can be gotten from the, uh, the, the map, maybe you need a GIS. But GIS are very expensive if you want to use them. You have to install them on your computer, so it's quite difficult also, also to manage the uh, IT uh, step of this kind of approach. And that is why if you are using something that is maybe web-based, so you can reach a geographic information system using your simple web browser, it is easier to use this technology and maybe to take advantage of this technology in terms of quick visualization and maybe some sort of quick analysis. 
Of course, the idea is that everything is internet-based, so you can use everything on the web browser without installing expensive software. This is the key. Uh, this is my fourth keyword because uh, you can find uh, all over the internet a lot of software. This is, these are free resources. So here you can find some of the most famous um, software that are uh, dealing with uh, WebGIS uh, and that you can use uh, maybe getting an account or maybe registering to the websites uh, in order to produce uh, charts, uh, map uh, relationships between information and uh, geographical position. Uh, I would like to uh, give you some, uh, some advices because, for example, if you need to create a, a colorful map of the widespread or some sort of phenomena, map chart is a very good software. But also click to map is a very good software. So if you take a look, you, you can find many, 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 many examples of, uh, of software all over the internet. But if you take a look to those ones, uh, I think you will find something very interesting. I will delve into one of them. Well, not specifically one of these one, because there is still another element that I want to introduce before moving to the software, that it is this one. Uh, as I told you, if you have information, you have some economical power. If you have maps, if you have updated maps, if you have uh, uh, accurate maps, you have a lot of power in terms of, uh, in terms of economic wealth because you can sell this information, for example, to all the enterprises and all the companies that are dealing with the, uh, I don't know, street navigators, uh, software that are uh, guiding you uh, in places. Of course, uh, Google and Apple invested a lot of money in order to have this kind of representation uh, always updated and upgraded. But if you are dealing with free software and if you are dealing with uh, open source software, there is this kind of uh, um, company, well, it is not a company, it's much more something of a foundation, it's resembling some kind of foundation uh, that was uh, introduced in 2004 in the UK. Um, the company and the project is called OpenStreetMap. Uh, everything in OpenStreetMap is free of charge, you can use it freely. You can update it. So if you can find that some information is not accurate, you can propose some upgrade to the map. And of course, it is quite interesting because OpenStreetMap, it is the very foundation, it is the software that is behind some very useful interface. Of, of course, these software interface are free of use. And the most famous one is called the UMAP. And I would like to show you UMAP because UMAP is extremely easy to use, uh, can be complex because if you want to put information on a map in a very detailed way, you can make something also here. And very, very, very quickly, I would like to show you how this kind of software is working because uh, it is free of use. It is very, very uh, nice to see also. Uh, let me share another window that I prepared uh, for you, if I can use. Well, during this pandemic, I used a lot of software, different software for video telepresence. Zoom was not one of the software that I used more, but I'm trying to do my best in sharing this screen. And very quickly, I would show you this one. Okay. Okay. I hope you can find and you can see my, my, oh, okay, perfect. Uh, this is the main uh, um, uh, web page. This is the home page of UMAP. Uh, this is the, the website. And then, of course, I can leave you also my slides uh, in which I put all the URLs uh, for the, the, the free software. Uh, UMAP, as you can see, is a branch of uh, OpenStreetMap. So everything is free. Everything is uh, relying on free information. So you can use it without any problem. As you can see, I have to create a login in order to enter. And as you can see, my login is depending of the, um, uh, of the cartography of the mapping system that I, I would like to choose. In this case, I want to choose OpenStreetMap because I have my, uh, my elements here. So uh, this is a WebGIS. Well, to be honest, this is a software web interface that is connected to a WebGIS. That is why I introduced this kind of approaches before, because if we actually don't know 
what we have in front of us, it's quite difficult to get oriented here. Uh, of course, there is a lot of uh, uh, ads here, other cartography and other maps that were made by other people uh, that are participating into this project. I will go into my maps just to give you an idea. Uh, well, here you can find some of the elements you can create. Of course, you can, of course, uh, the first, uh, at the first uh, login, you can create your own map. And just to give you an idea, to show you how simple it is, well, of course, you have WGS84 here, because this is the projection that I was talking about. Uh, of course, I can go uh, in a place that maybe uh, you can, I don't know, <laughs> well, no, if you are dealing with the, this kind of territory. And as you can see, I have um, a framework that is quite similar to Google Maps, uh, quite similar to uh, Apple Maps, uh, and everything that maybe you are uh, acquainted to use. The difference, the main difference is this one. Let me move this, uh, this window here. The main difference is this one. As you can see, I can, for example, uh, layering information. And that is why I was talking about GIS. So I can create, for example, different layers where I'm going to place different information. So for example, if you want to create uh, uh, maps uh, in which you are superimposing uh, or layering information about uh, places, uh, people, uh, buildings, uh, I don't know, uh, your ideas that are coming out from your design activities, you can organize this information in terms of layer. So here, for example, let me show you, you can create uh, many different layers in which, uh, as you can see, when I click a new layer, I can put some information because the idea is to connect the information. And of course, there are a lot of feature and a lot of option that you can change. But just to give you the idea, because I don't want to delve too much in something, I can place simply information, maybe clicking, of course, uh, reaching the level of detail that I want, for example, here, just to give you an idea, I can click one point and start to relate information here, even in terms of point, but also in terms of regions. So if you need to highlight some regions in which you want to place and to link some information, here you can see that you can link uh, a lot of information, for example, to this uh, uh, polygon that I created, well, while I'm creating this element, I can share, for example, the, these maps, or I can show this map in a website, in a presentation, in whatever you want. And just clicking on this polygon, you can see the information that you decided to relate to this element. So I think it's quite interesting because uh, you can put a lot of information on this. Let me show you how very quickly, because I know that my time is running out. But if I decide, for example, let me show you, to show you um, a map that was already created, just to show you one of my maps. Uh, well, of course, you can also, okay, you can also uh, click on the way in which you want to represent your territory. For example, uh, I'm fond of uh, Point clouds. I don't know if you uh, know what point clouds are, but they are digital representation of spaces and objects in terms of uh, uh, points that are related in space. I will show you something later. But the idea is that I created this map that you can see is uh, some sort of a worldwide map in which you can find many elements that are connected just like I showed you. And in this map uh, that, of course, I can uh, uh, share with uh, other people, I can uh, collect information. Let me show you this information, for example. This is a, a very famous uh, street in Bologna because it is the historical place of our university. So I'm uh, a little bit proud to show you this because I would show you something. Very, very quickly, I created with this icon here some polygons in which I want to place, for example, some connected information. What kind of information? Well, let me show you. If I click, for example, on this area here, I managed to link, for example, a point cloud. I, want that, I don't want to delve into point cloud, but this is the point cloud of this square. And the point cloud is a representation that was made with the smartphone. This one was ma made with a smartphone. 
uh, with a specific software, with a specific technology that is uh, something that I want to talk you uh, now. I want to introduce you now because it's uh, a little bit complex if you want. But there are many free software also on the internet that are uh, getting you uh, the ability to get in touch with this uh, technology that I linked in a very simple way here. How I link this? Well, I uh, clicked on, the, on my map. I decided to create, for example, a specific area here, just to give you an idea. Then, as you can see, I can place this polygon on a layer. So, for example, is something that is about public space. I don't know. And maybe putting a description, uh, if you click on the question mark here, you have some information about this. Uh, well, you can put some, uh, some information connected. Let me show you. If I want to put a picture, well, of course, I prepared, I already prepared a picture for you that is not exactly in this specific place, but just to give you an idea, I can uh, put some uh, web URL here. That of course is it is depending on the uh, website in which you are maybe storing images, for example, and then I can put this information. Uh, whoops, this way, and this is uh, Bologna Square. That of course uh, it is not placed here, but just to give you an idea. Then I can save my element here and I can disable my editing. So everything it can be public. Now it is not public because I'm not, I decided not to share, still not to share, but you can share, for example, your, your map with this uh, command here. And if I click here, for example, there is a link in which I can get, for example, a picture. This was a picture that you can find uh, that is a li little bit sloped because it was taken by uh, a drone. So uh, it is not so, uh, well, it is not so uh, leveled if you want, but it is something that I connected to, to this element. Or maybe another thing that you can find is this one. You can put some marks. As you can see, I can put a marker very quickly. And of course, there is a description of the information that I can connect. But just to give you an idea, uh, I put a mark here, and maybe the mark here is a connection to a um, uh, photographic representation that was made by Google. So, for example, you can uh, uh, collect uh, all the information that you need uh, to describe a specific location. In this case, uh, this is a, a square here in Bologna with the, this kind of representation. So, just linking, for example, a, um, a website. It is quite easy. Uh, let me show you. You can do very quickly this one because if I open Google Maps and I want to create my own map in uh, uh, in a specific uh, representation there, so just to show you very, 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 very quickly, I can get, of course, my visualization. I think that you already know the the street view. If you click here on the three point here, there is uh, the, uh, the sharing, uh, sorry, it is in Italian, of course, but there is a sharing link that you can get here. And if you copy this link and you can, and if you put this link into the mark that you are preparing, you can get this uh, final result here. So uh, in the uh, exact uh, tag, uh, in the exact, exact record that I showed you before, you can link, for example, specific point of these uh, uh, street view images in which you can start to collect information about what you think that those places are, uh, all the information that is connected to other elements. Of course, if you want, you can customize your map because maybe you don't like this kind of map that is in the background. So maybe you can decide to adopt, well, a different map or maybe a colorful one, I don't know. Or maybe a map that you developed on your own in order to show specific element. And with this specific format, you can collect all the information and in some way have everything that is placed uh, connected to, uh, to, um, uh, to a web GIS system. And that I think it's quite interesting because, of course, there is the whole world here. So you can, of course, search for a specific uh, address here if you want. 
so you can put everything here and once you have uh, get the, the final location of your intervention for example you can start draw you can start putting picture you can start to link for example your opinion this is quite important let me switch back to my black and white but because i think that is easier to to read uh, uh, map here but if i want to put for example my opinion about places my notes my remarks i can click on the places i can put a mark and then i can write something here so i think that is quite interesting because it's some sort of a repository of data repository that is connecting information to a specific uh, map and of course, there are many, many other things that you can do. Uh, for example, uh, as uh, you probably, you probably uh, guessed, uh, I'm very fond of communications. I'm a radio ham. So for example, this is a map representation of a specific uh, um, radio station in my region that are letting me communicate with all over the world so for example if i want to know the frequency of this specific repeater i can click on this map and this map show me how to tune my radio in order to communicate this is quite interesting because this information was not provided uh, to me by uh, a manual uh, editing of the map but it is connected just to give you an idea to layers of course and it is connected to external files there is a specific institution in italy that is upgrading the position and the frequency of this element so the map is automatically reading from this element and is updating itself uh, mostly in an automatic way and i think it's quite useful because in this specific uh, uh, software you can uh, uh, link, uh, for example, import data here from a specific place, also a new URL, a new URL so also a um, web-based uh, updated file. And I think that you can find many, many ways in order to introduce your, your information. For example, a text file, a drawings. You can also link drawings uh, to, this, uh, to this representation because maybe you can put some uh, links uh, to them. And uh, more or less, I think that is uh, uh, everything, a very quick introduction, I know, but I think that is something that can be useful in order to have a primer uh, to this kind of technology because it is free of use. Uh, and uh, it, there is another element that is quite important. All the maps that you can find here are updated in real time. So uh, people that are participating into this project are updating the, the maps. So I think they are quite uh, uh, accurate in terms of our time. I don't want to, uh, to take your time anymore. So uh, of course, I'm av available. I'm here if you have any questions. But uh, th this was more or less my introduction to this software. UMAP, OpenStreet.fr, it is based in France free of use, you can register at it and you can uh, find a way to, to see in a much more detailed way what I showed you. Thank you. Thank you uh, so much for the uh, presentation. So <clears throat> you can see these are actually very powerful techniques, right? <clears throat> so I, of course, in this workshop, because we have only like three days to, to work with each other, and then also uh, because uh, um, in this case, uh, uh, it might be, I don't know if it's still realistic if you can use it for this assignment, uh, but you might actually use it still for your thesis, right? Uh, or I think in Berlin, for example, um, <clears throat> at that time we had also Darren uh, with us and you, right? Uh, we, we were basically then over the time of the workshop a bit more kind of uh, adding additional tutorials. And then at the end of the, the workshop, we, ha we already could use uh, many of those, those maps, right? Um, so I think take it as something that uh, I think uh, fits to our topic of um, online research, uh, uh, how to get information of sites, uh, site-specific information into uh, uh, analysis. Uh, and also I think what is amazing with those examples that you show, you can on one hand make and share those amazing maps for others, right? Uh, so that are um, where people can also travel through those maps, right? They can, they can zoom in, zoom out, concentrate to kind of focus on certain things that you want to tell them or, or they, they can even further elaborate on them. 
but also because they have this chance of linking to real time data sources, right? Uh, uh, um, which, uh, for example, if you would think of, let's say, the pandemic, right? You could basically probably link to this John Hopkins page with all the kind of cases of the pandemic in real time, right? Uh, and map it and then probably find out, uh, in fact, that might be anyway something quite quite useful for, for your analysis. Uh, I think for Hong Kong, you have already the map, I think, where you see all the corona uh, uh, cases, even in Hong Kong up to the house, even to my apartment when I came from quarantine, uh, people could, or was in quarantine, people, my neighbor could see, oh, I, are you already online? I cannot see you in your apartment, right? And, uh, and you could even check and compare that also for your exercise. Huh? So, so I think take those inputs, uh, not like the same with Manfredo's input on using social media research or this one on creating maps, not only as something, oh, now you tell me this, but how should I do that until Saturday? No, I, uh, uh, if you can, maybe you can still do it, right? Uh, but it's more like uh, maybe those workshops are these intensive moments where we s synergize all kind of knowledge that then of course, and tools uh, that you might also take on to uh, to your further projects, no? Like the, the end of one project is the start of another one, right? So, so uh, it's a learning process, no? Now, um, how is it from you, students? I mean, actually, the, those maps that you showed this uh, um, Open Street Map and and the one that you uh, in Berlin do, did we use Open Street Map? What's uh, yes, uh, yes, yes. This, uh, no, yes, no? Sorry. Uh, um, hello, you, uh, Jun Wei, you had a question? Uh, no, 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 you, you don't. Go. No, 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 no. I, you wanted to say something about uh, OpenStreetMap? Uh, yes, in this semester, you know, the room, I, I required us to use the OpenStreetMap to do some analysis just through the GIS. Mm -hmm. So I think, yeah, this platform quite be uh, very useful. Yeah. So you are already prepared for that, right? No? And because also, <laughs> because now, remember, we were just looking at your maps and, and the mappings in, in New York and Hong Kong, right? And I think maybe because those two cities are quite popular, so you might, you might find something, right? Um, that, uh, and also, by the way, uh, how you can uh redraw these maps in terms of changing the colors or highlighting certain elements and so on uh and if you use it the same kind of software right or or, or web uh, gis uh, uh system um it might make it also more easier to to make something uh consistent between hong kong and new york right because you could uh, uh have the same kind of graphic and so on um in fact, Manfredo and and, and uh, Luisa and Simone, uh, we were we were actually already thinking before the, the workshop if we actually, in terms of instead of just having a PowerPoint at the end, if we create actually a kind of web-based product at the end, right? Uh, but I think it's maybe too ambitious for this kind of short time um, to to do that, and and that's why why we we then thought okay, you, maybe you just make a PowerPoint presentation. But you could imagine that uh, uh, if we would have a slightly more time, that the kind of information that we are generating, right, that this could be also something that could be then be made public, uh, not only as a as a PDF or something, but basically as as a mapping or something where people can add on or or can see it basically in a in a web based uh, uh, platform, right? Um, so you, maybe next time we can we can do this also. Uh, in fact, we see this this whole endeavor uh, as something where, of course, we give you inputs and and uh, but also we learn. But I think we are also in the discussion with Luisa, Simone, and, and Manfredo to build up something like a public space academy, right? Where we potentially would run those workshops that we now you are basically the guinea pigs, <laughs> or you are helping us to with you together we develop things right that maybe could be workshops let's say a one a one month workshop maybe or uh, or a th two weeks three weeks workshop and then we could basically uh, um, um, build all those things kind of uh, maybe also to to a further level of, of um, detailing and and so on right 
uh, in this case is, is more maybe a sharing and to, to see all those different opportunities. And then to maybe you guys, uh, when you work in other offices in, in Europe or somewhere, you can, you can later further, further uh, experiment with those, right? Um, are there, seeing that, uh, Junwei, it seems like you, you also already, uh, uh, that's also actually a reason why I got Darren and, and uh, uh, Jeroen into the program because they, they have some of those kind of capacities also, right? Um, is there anything you want to ask, Simona? Maybe any kind of little trick or any, because I think he's, he's probably the person to do, to, to uh, if there's something of those kind of tools that he just kind of saw and showed you or any other that might be useful. Anything that comes to your mind? Um, well, well, I haven't finished it. Yeah. Not, not for it. Yeah, 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 it's quite true. Uh, you can it indirectly. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. No? But I hope it's still uh, still interesting. Did you discuss also with Jeroen together and so on before, like how you would do those, um, basically end on those additional information that, that could become also a web, like an information also for other people that could be posted and so on? Because I think that, of course, this will be the future. And I think many, is, uh, potentially some of you will, you will be working in this even as your job later and earn much more money than with, with doing urban design, right? Uh, potentially, right? As, as it happens, uh, maybe even have a company doing those things, right? Uh, they uh, they um, proposed some the online uh, tutorial on the YouTube and uh, to, um, yes, to encourage us to uh, learn by ourselves. However, it, uh, you know, it takes some hours or weeks or even months to, 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 to learn this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, uh, you know, um, according to our uh, experience in the semester, once you learn it, that'd be quite useful uh, because, you know, uh, for instance, the, the open street map, they can provide virus uh, information or, and the, the is rate, yes. They also can provide virus information that you uh, couldn't search on the uh, just uh, through the Google. Yeah, they can provide many professional uh, information. Yeah, and uh, you know, we we have to uh, take times to search. Yeah, to search this. So maybe you might maybe. One or two, maybe uh, in terms of your your thesis project, you might even kind of experiment a little bit with this, right? Because uh, mm -hmm. in your thesis, uh, of course, you're still very busy, but but it's in comparison to work in an office, relatively a little bit less busy, right? Yeah. Um, uh, now, of course, I, I was reminded uh, through the presentation also no, that to see like for the next stage of your research, the look for the maps also of the pandemic uh, cases in your case study area. Uh, that might be also interesting to, to have those, right? Uh, for uh, to really map out, are there maybe in the neighborhoods, were there particular uh, uh, many cases and so on? No? Um, but uh, otherwise, um, Manfredo, Simone, any, any other things that we want to add? No? Um, Simone? Yeah, the, the mm -hmm. No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Very, very, very quickly. Um, yes, I think that um, this kind of technology could also be some sort of output uh, of your outcomes, because uh, if you are collecting information, well, uh, the, the final goal could not be only the uh, only putting the information on the map, but could be having the information displayed on the map. So you are, see if you are producing information from other sources, uh, that can be spreadsheet, they can be uh, other repositories, uh, your own designs, your own drafting, I don't know. Uh, maybe you can do, use this technology in order to have a final display, not only the, uh, the feeling of every single element, because it could be boring and time wasting, mm -hmm. but it could be a way to organize information. And in terms of uh, uh, urban design, I think it's quite useful because you have a wide perspective of, uh, on everything. Yeah, and particularly, I believe what what I believe uh, it, it, what the, the amazingly powerful thing about this is, is of course the link to 
automatically updated yeah. other information. I, imagine you can link it to automatically updated traffic information, uh, health service information, uh, uh, virus cases, right, or uh, weather, or all those kind of things. Uh, once you are in the system and you know how, as you as you show, right, uh, how you can basically link that with this kind of real world uh, 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 permanently uh, updated databases. Um, I think that's of course an extremely powerful uh, um, way of, of reinventing, uh, for example, urban design, which is anyway not, I mean, there is no, never a city finished in terms of its design. I mean, <laughs> there's only maybe if the city dies, it, it's finished, right? Uh, so because it's constantly evolving, right? And to to basically uh, continue with your project and so on with something that actually is constantly updating itself, right? So I think those are kind of extremely interesting uh, opportunities, right? But also the other thing is also just uh, the graphic opportunities and so on the, to to manipulate those those kind of maps and so on and to to uh, across different territories, no? because uh, particularly for work that we do, like uh, in Hong Kong and New York or Bologna, right? We could easily have the same kind of graphics and so on that that fit together and so on. No? Okay, I would say uh, I know that the students are uh, now because they, we have already gave, given them the assignments, right? So now now they are of course never nervous to 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 finish their their assignments. Uh, um, and uh, but I want to uh, kind of heartfelt uh, uh, thanks to to Simone and uh, as as usual I'm quite uh, uh, always astonished to see always uh, new things um, in in uh, working with you and I I hope that we can run in the future maybe a little bit longer workshop so you know, that we can basically uh, really make a full use of all those opportunities. Uh, also in the application. And uh, if there is no more question of the students, uh, anything you or Manfredo, you still want to ask uh, Simona? I think they are the students there, yeah. because we just had a desk grid, uh, they might be a little bit kind of uh, uh, looking for this. Manfredo, you, you want to say something? Oh, I'm fine, I'm fine. We already had the commenter and I think uh, that you're right. So. Uh, this is very good for uh, uh, giving a sort of opening the horizon and, think, and letting think students maybe after the workshop if there's still time uh, how they can use uh, all this information map the information and pull out the, and pull out the information in the way they want to make the presentation but that's something that uh, might be discussed later on and if Simone is available maybe you can make the invitation later yeah on. the other thing is also that we are uh, producing basically a several forms of video outputs from those uh, this uh, workshop. So one will be more kind of edited slightly more, maybe a promotion video or something for the whole endeavor of the whole week. Um, but also another one will be um, potentially a slightly, uh, one with, with slightly longer inputs where we uh, might use uh, more longer snippets of the videos, but then of course we would come back to each speaker to see if you're comfortable about those two elements, um, or, or even interviews to reflect about all those kind of technologies of online teaching and so on to make it basically a learning resource uh, with the budget we have and so on. Maybe we can produce something quite interesting. So we might come back still to, to see more to basically extend this maybe even a little bit or have a kind of short interview or something from your presentation that we cut inside to basically create a learning resource uh, with the material that we are actually producing through the workshop, the, the student work, but also each of the different uh, learning inputs that we, we got about social media, about open street uh, 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 and, and web GIS and so on. Okay, so uh, thanks so much. Uh, so uh, enjoy your day in uh, in Bologna. Are you uh, allowed to go outside to, to have a dinner? Or you... yeah, yeah, we are we are starting to move very slowly because we have all some restrictions. But now we are a little bit free than before. So a bit more free than before. <laughs> <laughs> are you uh, are people already going back to eat in restaurants or the people take out or 
cook room? Not so much, not so much, because there are these uh, social distances that they, they have to be kept, so people are still uh, not so brave. So, <laughs> yeah, we are, we are still uh, included. <laughs> so, you are mainly cooking or are you taking out? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> There is also Luisa that is cooking very nice uh, dishes, so I, I'm okay. I'm fine right now. <laughs> okay, okay. Good. So, um, yeah, let's say goodbye to uh, Simone. I, I also stopped okay. the recording.